what is a zero day vulnerability? And then um, a zero day exploit or attack. So at the most basic level, let's say I'm a hacker and I find a bug in your iPhone iOS software that no one else knows about, especially Apple. That's called a zero day because the minute it's discovered, engineers have had zero days to fix it. If I can study that zero day, I could potentially write a program to exploit it. And that program would be called a zero day exploit. And for iOS, the dream is that you craft a zero day exploit that can remotely exploit someone else's iPhone without them ever knowing about it. And you can capture their location, you can capture their contacts that record their telephone calls, record their camera without them knowing about it. Basically, you can put an invisible ankle bracelet on someone without them knowing. And you can see why that capability, that zero-day exploit would have immense value for a spy agency or a government that wants to monitor its critics or dissidents. And so there's a very lucrative market now for zero-day exploits. So you said a few things there. One is iOS. Why iOS? Why, which operating system? Which one is the sexier thing to try to get to or the most impactful thing? And uh, the other thing you mentioned is remote versus like having to actually come in physical contact with it. Is that the distinction? So iPhone exploits have just been a government's number one priority. Recently, actually, the price of an Android remote zero-day exploit, something that can get you into Android phones, is actually higher. The value of that is now higher on this underground market for zero-day exploits than an iPhone iOS exploit. So things are changing. So the there's probably more Android devices, so that's why it's better. But then the iPhone side, if I so I'm an Android person because I'm a man of the people. But it seems like all the elites use iPhone, all the people at nice dinner parties. So uh, is that is that the reason that like the, the more powerful people use iPhones? Is that why? I don't think so. I actually, so it was about two years ago that the prices flipped. It used to be that if you could craft a remote zero click exploit for iOS, then that was about as good as it gets. You could sell that to a zero-day broker for $2 million. The caveat is you can never tell anyone about it because the minute you tell someone about it, Apple learns about it, they patch it, and that $2.5 million investment that that zero-day broker just made goes to dust. So a couple years ago, and don't quote me on the prices, but an Android (laughs) zero-click remote exploit for the first time, topped the iOS. And actually, a lot of people's read on that was that that it might be um, a sign that Apple's security was falling and that it might actually be easier to find an iOS zero-day exploit than find an Android zero-day exploit. The other thing is market share. There are just more people around the world that use Android. And a lot of governments that are paying top dollar for zero-day exploits these days are deep-pocketed governments in the Gulf that want to use these exploits to monitor their own citizens, monitor their critics. And so it's not necessarily that they're trying to find elites. Uh, It's that they want to find out who these people are that are criticizing them or perhaps planning the next Arab Spring. So in your experience... Are most of these attacks targeted to cover a large population, or is there attacks that are targeted towards specific individuals? So I think it's both. Some of the zero-day exploits that have fetched top dollar that I've heard of in my reporting in the United States were highly targeted. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, a potential terrorist attack. They wanted to get into this person's phone. It had to be done in the next 24 hours. They approached hackers and say, we'll pay you X millions of dollars if you can do this. But then you look at when we've discovered iOS zero-day exploits in the wild, some of them have been targeting large populations like Uyghurs. So a couple years ago, there was a 
a watering hole attack. Okay, what's a watering hole attack? There's a website. It was actually it had information aimed at Uyghurs, and you could access it all over the world. And if you visited this website, it would drop an iOS zero-day exploit onto your phone. And so anyone that visited this website that was about Uyghurs, anywhere, I mean, Uyghurs, Uyghurs living abroad, basically the Uyghur diaspora, would have gotten infected with this zero-day wow. exploit. So in that case, you know, they were targeting huge swaths of this one population or people interested in this one population basically in real time. 